the IMF has warned about pressures to increase wages and subsidies, uh, and, and these, it says, threaten measures to bring down high debt in countries of the region, Latin America and the Caribbean. How would a future PNP government reduce the, the central government wages to GDP ratio to 9% within the medium term without significant job cuts in the public sector? Well, the truth is we don't even know what the status is in terms of the agreement that the Jamaica Labour Party has with the IMF. In terms of what we would do, we've done it before and we'll do it again. The IMF standby agreement has to be renegotiated. In terms of moving forward and bringing the wage bill down, we'll have to find cost-effective ways, we'll have to find innovative ways to reallocate resources so that we manage any kind of public sector, private sector fallout. But to answer your question directly, we are going to go in, see what the problem is, because we don't know, and the JLP has not told us. The addition to that is going back to basics. If you don't grow the economy, there are two ways to deal with the wage as a proportion of GDP. You can either cut jobs, which they seem that their only option will be, or you can grow the economy. It wouldn't be the first time the People's National Party assumed government when the economy was in crisis. In 1989, there was a debt to GDP ratio of 269%. Thank you, Mr. We brought Price. it down to 107%. Now from team JLP. I would agree with Lisa on one point that they don't know what is to be done. Because the fact is, in, for the election year of 1993, the public service was increased by the People's National Party. For the election year of 1997, the public service was similarly increased. And for the election year of 2002, it was similarly increased. This has bloated our, our public service numbers. And we now have to take decisive steps in how to deal with it. Instead of laying off people, what we are doing is dealing with attrition rates. And I'll allow Marlene I can add. only take the statement that we have done it before and we'll do it again means that we have mashed up the economy before and we'll mash it up again. Nadine McLeod no has the next question and it goes to team JLP. Give two specific programs which your party in power will put in place to solve the shortage of qualified pharmacists in the public health sector. Well, what has been happening in the, in the pharmaceutical um, sector, not just pharmaceutical, but in healthcare generally, has been a task shifting in the sense that what you try to do is basically persons who are specially trained are assigned to the tasks that they're trained for. And so, like in our primary health centers, what we want to do is equipped with a medically trained doctor, a nurse, a um, health aide, and a psychiatric um, health aide, liaison officer, and essentially what you're trying to do is create a situation where persons who are specifically trained for a particular job. So previously what has happened is that a nurse would be doing record keeping and would be doing other household tasks, so to speak, in terms of keeping the, the clinic running. Essentially what you're trying to do is get persons specifically trained to, do, to deal with those tasks. So a records keeper would be employed. Likewise, that is what is being done in the pharmaceutical industry. We recognize that pharmacists need to Thank be employed. Thank you, Dr. Longmore. A rebuttal now from Team PNP. Um, I'm trying to steady myself because I'm confused. Um, I thought the question was how do you increase the numbers? Right? And I'm thinking that if we want to increase the numbers, we spoke to something like this earlier, and I gave the facts earlier, 156 positions, only 45 persons. Now, you want to first see if you can interest persons into coming across from the private sector into the public sector. Two, you want to train people, and if it is that you need to bond them, then fine, but you need to first identify that you need to train people because there's a shortage and, a, and attack it from that angle. But I, I, I am confused as to what I'm hearing, and, and I want Jamaica to know that this election is something serious, and it can't just be about talking, it can't just be about people running off their mouth. It has to be based Thank on you, Dr. Issues. Campbell. Ingrid Brown has the next question. It goes to Team PNP. Gangs have over time aligned themselves to political parties. What can your party do as a public show to Jamaicans that you are serious about distancing yourself from this population? Uh, you know, I'm happy you use the phrase about public show. It is not the People's National Party who is big on public shows and public relations. We intend to address 
and continue to address the issue of crime. First and foremost, we will continue to allow the police and the military to do their job professionally. It has never been an area held by the People's National Party that barricaded itself and its citizens from the rest of the country and had a prime minister in its leader speak about expending political capital to maintain such a closed community, an exclusive zone of mayhem and protecting who is now a confessed criminal in another jurisdiction through greater care in spending resources so that enterprise can return to these communities. We will not have to have an issue about alignment of gangs with communities Thank or you, parties. Mr. Price, a rebuttal now from Team JLP. My fellow Jamaicans, the issue of gang alignment with political parties is one that continues to plague us. And I don't think we can meaningfully address it by going along the blame game. Both sides must share the responsibility to deal with this. This is Jamaica we're talking about, you know. This is the future of Jamaica we're talking about. Let us be real. The question was posed about reality. Whose reality do we live in? We shouldn't politicize this issue. We should all be part of the solution. And we must break that connection. Break it. It's doing us more harm than good. Thank you, Mrs. Mallow Hufort. Garfield Burford has the next question. It's with Team JLP. Again, uh, raising the issue of radical solutions, because many Jamaicans expect, expect, expect fresh and innovative thinking from younger members of, the, of your party, like yourselves. So again, I ask, what is your most radical strategy or solution to addressing the big issues that we have in the country, social and economic, your most radical solution as young people? Well, I will start by indicating that we have identified several industries that we believe to be the pillars of the new uh, Jamaican economy. Tourism, ICTs, agriculture, the financial services, the creative industries, logistics and maritime services. We are aggressively pursuing investments in these areas and a national export strategy that will anchor all our undertakings to enable us to gain greater foreign exchange from our efforts as, a, as, as, as an economy. I, I want to see youth offenders who commit petty crimes be taken outside of the criminal justice system and be dealt with on a social renewal path. And I think we have legislation on board which requires implementation and requires funding. And I think that the government is to move aggressively to ensure that those programs become a reality. A lot of our youths are, are Thank you, Mrs. Malahu Ford. A rebuttal now from Team PNP. Uh, the most radical thing that they could come with is truth telling. Sitting in this audience, Safaya, you're totally blameless here. In addition to the senators on the platform is at least one other senator. All three have their names affixed to an affidavit that said nothing wrong was done with respect to the handling of the extradition matter. And then they speak about transparency. And then they speak about radical changes. Fact of the matter is, as long as you have a government such as the Jamaica Labour Party that continues to obfuscate, ignore and misdiagnose, we won't have any improvements for the lot of our young people, our elderly, our police, teachers, nurses or any other sector of the Jamaican family. Thank you, Mr. Price. Nadima Cloud has the, what well, may be the final question. It goes to Team PNP.